Welcome back to Happy Hour. I'm your host, DJ Kyle, and in the studio today, we have Dr. Mark Beck. Dr. Beck, thank you so much for uh, coming into the uh, show. And, Thanks for having me. And being on here with us. I want to know a little bit, how long have you been doing your practice? How long have you been at this? I've been in chiropractic for 40 years this year, and I uh, started out in Wichita, did some time in St. Louis, and I'm here at the lake for 12 years. Wow, wow. Now tell so, us where you're, where you're uh, located. I'm in Sunrise Beach, uh, where F and 5 come together. I'm just to the north of there, about an eighth of a mile on the left-hand side, same size as Woods and Clark Tires. Absolutely. All right. So today we're, we're going to talk about, <laughs> it's really funny because uh, I was trying to read some of the notes and uh, I, I, <clears throat> let's see if I could pronounce this right. <clears throat> today on the show, we're going to talk with Dr. Mark Beck. What is peripheral neuropathy? Peripheral neuropathy. Was is, it close? You're pretty Was close. It, you're pretty close. close. <laughs> you did good. <clears throat> no, but peripheral neuropathy is any pain away from the spine. But, but traditionally, we're thinking of something that starts in the toes usually and works its way up the legs or in the hands and works its way up the arms. Okay. So that's traditionally what we see, and that's the classic kind of peripheral neuropathy. So pain in the toes? It, it could be pain or numbness or burning and stinging, but that's usually where it starts and it creeps its way up the leg. And it can be in the hands as well. And it can be in one leg or both legs. It's usually both. It, it, there's a lot of varieties of peripheral neuropathy. So is the burning and stinging, is that kind of like, like when your arm goes to sleep and you get that like needly point, like that kind of feeling, but it, just it, constantly? Yes, constantly. And, and then the other side, that's the pain is one side of the coin. And the other side of the coin is numbness. They can have constant numbness where they can't feel their toes in their feet or they feel like they're walking on cardboard or they can't feel the hot pavement outside today. Wow. That's so. quite an interesting thing. Now, do you know the specific cause for well, the, these different pains, or is this just something that... It's kind of individual. Every, every patient's a little bit different, and there's a big misconception that uh, you have to have diabetes to have peripheral neuropathy. Well, that's not the case. Uh, about 70% of the people with diabetes will develop peripheral neuropathy, but only 30% of the patients we see have diabetes. Really? So there's a lot of people, a lot of other causes other than diabetes, and, but a lot of people think, oh, if you have peripheral neuropathy, you're diabetic. Then, then you must, yeah, you must but be that's diabetic. But that's not the, that's not the case. Huh. It, it, it's a con, there's a lot of confusion out there. Uh, and however, in diabetes, a lot of times the first time they realize they have the diabetes is when their peripheral neuropathy shows up. Yeah, and then they say, well, my my foot hurts, so I must have diabetes. Right. Huh. And, and, and they're, yes, it's progressed a little bit at that point. Yeah. So, so for someone that has the neuropathy but doesn't have the diabetes, they might be thinking that they do because it's that same kind of like that's, Correct. that's the thing. Right. But then that, that's a big misconception. Uh, and there are a lot of other causes for it, lifestyle, uh, age. Uh, the older we get, the more uh, peripheral neuropathy we see. Uh, I mean, I've seen it in patients as young as 25. Uh, yeah. And, you know, 85 is 90 is probably my oldest patient. So that the, runs the whole gamut. Yeah. Now, would those like the younger ones, would that be with diabetes or even on, on both spectrums with uh, or without? Prob probably not. Probably uh, some other health issue has, has uh, intervened and caused this problem. So is this something that a doctor could diagnose or is there special things that you can do? Uh, anybody can diagnose it. I mean, any doctor can diagnose it. I mean, even Dr. Google can diagnose it. <laughs> but, <laughs> which, but, which a lot of times I find out that I'm sick. I didn't even but, know that I was. But, but, <laughs> but, but, but I, I have a lot of those come in the office and they are misdiagnosed. Yeah. Uh, so they don't really have peripheral neuropathy. Uh, but no, anybody can diagnose it. But I, am, uh, I have a, a diplomat in pain management and I'm board certified in, in treatment of intractable pain and peripheral neuropathy. Oh, okay. So, so, so this is like a, a specialty, something that you've been doing a lot of studying on. How do you go about diagnosing? Like if I came in and said, oh, my, my fingers are tingly or whatever they hurt at the end. We, we start with, a, with an evaluation. I call it the sensory evaluation to find out what, how the nerves are working. Okay. And, uh, and a lot of it is experience, you knowing what you're looking for. Uh, especially when they come in and they think they have peripheral neuropathy and they don't, but they do have some kind of ridiculous pain. It's usually coming from the low back or their arms. But then they come in, oh, I have peripheral neuropathy. I say, go, why do you think you have that? It's because they give me the list of symptoms. And I said, well, okay, let's figure this out and yeah. sort it out. But it, it, it's like a puzzle. You have to put it together. Yeah. And everybody's a little bit different. And every case is a little bit different. Oh, I, mean, I, I bet so. so it, and it's pretty interesting. And, and I know like in the body, like everything is connected. Sometimes if if your finger hurts, it's because you're 
hip is messing up or your something in your leg is wrong or whatever. So so you kind of like have to map all that out and find out like what's causing the the pain down here, even if it's upper back, lower back, hip, leg, whatever. Correct. You at least have to get in the right ballpark if you're going to treat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <So>. right. <laughs> you got to be you got to be somewhat close, right? So um, so do you do you have like what what would a full treatment plan for neuropathy B like if if you found out that someone did have this what would be like a, a treatment well the, and, and the treatment plan and let's, let's talk about that a little bit before we get to the treatment plan is a lot of people think it can be cured I'm real careful with the word cure because to me that means you're gonna we're gonna fix it and you're never gonna have it again yeah that's like saying I'm gonna cure your eye problem no yeah we have glasses on we're treating that eye problem and yeah. neuropathy is gonna be the same kind of thing we're gonna manage the case and, and every case is a little bit different. So I can't tell you what it's going to take ahead sure. of time or not. Uh, and every patient's a little different, and I tailor a program for every patient individually. Uh, and But it starts with intensive treatment, and as time goes, they need me less and less, which is what I want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so they can find some relief temporarily through this and then continual... You know, and, and get well, to where well, it's and they have to modify bit. their lifestyle a little bit, and mm -hmm. they have to, and a lot of the treatment they actually do at home, yeah. Uh, instead of coming into the office, and, and I like that better because yeah. uh, they can manage it themselves, and yeah. they don't they're not dependent on me. Yeah, they can wake so, up at so, nine in the morning and go, okay, well, I'm going to do this <laughs> this treatment or whatever. Right. So so no, it, and I like. You know, I just like them getting better. I mean, mm -hmm. I want to see people get better. We have a high rate of success. That's good. And, and I work hard at that because those that don't get better are the ones that I wake up with in the middle of the night. Ah, I got an idea. Uh -huh. And so I come up with all different different ideas and, and modify the plans to help them get better faster. Yeah, I could see your passion in this. And I, and I could tell that you have that heart of just not putting a Band-Aid on something, but like really trying to get down to the root of it and getting people fixed and having people with a, you know, a, a good part of life that they can go around and not have that, ex, you know, e extreme pain and stuff, so. I get a lot of joy out helping people get better. In uh -huh. fact, that's what keeps me working. Uh, since I'm retirement age, I don't want to retire. Yeah. I, I don't want to play pickleball, I don't want to play golf, <laughs> and I don't enjoy fishing. Yeah. So I might as well keep doing what I'm doing because I really enjoy doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, now what's the difference between the peripheral neuropathy and the plantar fasciitis? Because okay, the, I know both, you were talking about like feet pain. So Correct. Well, a lot of people will think they have peripheral neuropathy and they have to have plantar fasciitis, which is that basically the bottom of the foot is sore. Uh -huh. That's the plantar fascia. And, and, and the foot is not moving properly. And so there's a different treatment program that they have to do now, to get over that. Now, is that the same as like, like your arch dropping? Is that like a part of that? The, or? It can be. It doesn't oh, okay. have to be. It, it's usually a, a it, is, it is in the arch area, but it is not necessarily the arch falling causing the pain. Oh, okay. There's a lot of fallen arches that don't have pain, but when you have uh, plantar fasciitis, uh, you have pain. Okay, and gotcha. It can, and it can be severe. It can be debilitating. I, I had a patient just the other day that had plantar fasciitis for 20 years. Oh, and and yes, needing help bad, and yeah. she's getting better. Well, that's good. Yes, that's good. So the the difference between the two are are they very similar? The people can misperceive the pain as similar, but it, it's the, they're entirely different origins of pain, and the treatment's entirely different. Okay, and and that would just be something that someone could come in, and you can kind of diagnose and figure out, get right to the the root of the cause. Correct. That's Correct. great. Yes. That's great. So tell us again, how would someone go about getting a hold of you if they're having these pains or whatever, and they just say, I want someone that knows what they're talking about, that can diagnose and that can help me through this pain. So, Well, well the, be the best thing to do is to call the clinic at 573-507-0441 uh, or go to the website of beckwellnesscenter.com. Absolutely. Again, I, I love to see your passion for this, and I wish you the best of luck. Again, if you want to uh, book yourself uh, an appointment, contact Dr. Mark Beck at Beck Wellness. Thank you again so much for coming on the Thank show. Thank you for having me. We definitely appreciate it. We have more happy hour coming up right after this.